let's jump into what's going on with the housing market as of uh, last week. You know, I was, when we we're talking off air, I, I would say that this housing market is just so uncommon from the standpoint of, you know, high interest rates, high home prices, low, low inventory, and home sales have fallen off a cliff. Now, now, traditionally speaking, I think that when you kind of see this combination, you would, you would see home prices being affected much more than they are. I mean, home prices are still making records while home sales are also making record lows. And those two, those two things, um, it's just interesting. So why don't we do this, Steve? Why don't we, why don't we jump into mortgage interest rates? And then we'll talk about how that's affecting the housing market and some of the other things that we'll, we'll unpack on today's episode. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, you're, you, you said it, this is, it's like nothing we've ever really experienced before where you've seen home affordability be so hard to achieve, you know, for, for so many people. So you think, and then you look at, you know, the, the home values going up, interest rates going up, and there's just still so much demand. I think I read a stat today that uh, 33% of new listings or 33% of listings are going with multiple offers over asking price right now are still being sold uh, with those terms and, and being, uh, you know, actively originating loans right now and, and kind of on the battlefield every day. Uh, I'm, I have, you know, I mean, I would say that, you know, if, if I've got five clients making offers on a weekend, I'm seeing maybe two of them get their offers accepted. And those, those are my ones that are, you know, high, high down payment, high net worth, waiving appraisal guarantees and things like that. My, my newer buyers and my less cash heavy buyers are struggling. So it is, it's an interesting time, you know, and, and from a rate perspective this week, really nothing, you know, coming through last week, really nothing changed. I mean, rates are trading in the, really in the high six range. There's to say that, you know, there's all kinds of studies and surveys that say rates are 7.2 and 7% and this and that. Well, there's, there's really no zero point rate today. So it's really hard to say what the rate is. So you, you look at, you know, what is the majority of my business locking in at is the way I view it. And a lot of my clients right now are locking in between that 6.625, which is what I locked one in this morning, up to like 6.99. Some of the investment property stuff is over 7%. And, and I've talked about it on here before, but just to try to be short about it. There, there's The reason there are no zero point rates available in this market is because lenders and institutions that are going to hold these notes, they realize that as soon as that rates are going to go down, like all the information out there and all the economic data says that rates are going to go down. And because of the society we live in, where we're just so information, like in, I guess, inf information inundated or something, you know, there's just, you have so like, as soon as that starts to happen, that's just going to be, you know, from every angle. So they know these loans are going to get refinanced and get paid off and it's going to be a mad dash. So these lenders like, look, whether you take seven and a half or you take 6.75, you're going to pay about a point to do the loan. And they just want, and that's just self-preservation, right? They want some of that money up front, knowing that they're not going to hold on to that loan for a long time. And that bond is going to have a very short life cycle and they're not going to make very much money on it. So they've got a plan that way. So that's that's why anybody out there right now that's looking at buying homes and agents that are representing buyers and different things that you see, you are going to see points on closing disclosures and loan estimates right now because that's just the way these rate sheets are trading. And it's a sign of the times knowing, again, that data is telling us rates should be going down. There's just been a, a unprecedented um, group of events that have put us in this position where they're not, which, I mean, you could, you could mark a hundred of them. You could say stimulus package or a uh, COVID-19, or now we have it's kind of interesting is that banks have certain liquidity requirements. And I'm sure as you've seen, like the SVB bank and uh, first Republic on the, on the West coast and some of these regional banks, what, what that means when these, these banks are, have these liquidity requirements as a result of the last financial crisis, right? So CFPB and TARP and all these different things came out and they said, okay, 
banks have to have a certain amount of money liquid. Otherwise, these banks are, you know, too big to fail and things like that. So they've got to have liquid money on hand. So all these banks that were holding mortgage-backed securities and holding 10-year treasury notes, well, in order to generate liquidity, these banks and institutions are selling all of these securities. So yes, inflation is coming down. And yes, the things that would normally trigger rates to go down are happening. The problem is there's also a flood of supply in this mortgage-backed security market that is keeping rates elevated. Now, the good news is those, those things will get bought and held on to, you know, and people will sit on those and hold them and they'll become more valuable to those institutions over time. So that will absorb itself. It's just taking longer than we thought. And then you go, which, which I'm sure you'll touch on, we get back into lack of inventory, high affordability, and it just, it keeps pushing these property values higher, which is, which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you said something interesting that I guess I hadn't thought about just until you said it, which is potentially like concrete evidence that mortgage rates are on their way down based on how these mortgages are being priced. All right, real quick, and then we'll get right back to the content. If you're a real estate agent, you're looking to build a listing-based business, a business where you can generate a multiple six-figure income, a business that doesn't require you to waste thousands of dollars on the new marketing gimmicks, then I'm going to invite you to click the link right underneath this video to learn about our Listing Agent Academy coaching program. This is a six-month intense coaching system that more than three thousand agents from every market all over the country have now gone through. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. I will shoot you straight. This program is not for everyone. This is for agents who value being around winners. They value being in a community of other real estate agents that actually show up, that actually put forth the work. And this is for agents that embrace high levels of accountability and visibility. To get the details, all you have to do is click the link beneath this video. You can schedule a coaching consultation and then you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back into the content. And so what I mean by that is you said something just a minute ago. You said there is no zero point rate. And the reason for that is lenders know people aren't going to hang on to these loans very long because mortgage rates are going to come down. Do you think that's an absolute? Like what I mean by that is is there any part of you that thinks interest rates aren't on their way down? And because of that, that's why these loans are being priced the way that they are. So your question is, do I think that rates there? Do you think there's a part of me that thinks rates will not come down? Well, here's, here's my question. Or do you so, think they're so on their way down? Here, here's the question. The question is, you said there is no zero point rate. Right. Right. So if you get seven and a quarter, call it today, which would be a, a higher rate than you potentially could get, the buyer is still going to pay substantially for a, that seven and a quarter. The reason they're paying that high uh, cost or points associated with the loan is because what you said was that lenders know that these borrowers aren't going to stay in these loans that long because rates are going to come down. So to me, I'm saying anybody who has any doubt that mortgage rates are going to come down, that to me, the lenders are telling us that rates are going to come down. It's just a matter of time. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. They it just uh, yeah. as a function I mean, of what that security is in the market, they they will start to come down. It just yeah, it's just not happening as fast as we thought. And there's there's just a lot of like just different factors. So you know, you always everything in economics, right? And that's what this is, is you're looking at economic data is based on previous events, right? So you're always looking, you're always looking in the past at economics and you're looking at previous, you know, times that inflation was very high and the Fed raised rates and led to reset. You're always looking at all of this historical data in economics because everything that you look at going forward, you think is going to follow that same trend. Yeah. And, and ultimately it always does, but there's always something, right? Like, so the last major recession was housing. And before that, it was whatever triggered, you know, the dot com bubbles and, and all these different things that trigger that, that are all new. That when you're in this time that we're in right now, you say, like, this is never going to change. 
like this is just so crazy. We've never seen homes this high. And, you know, I've never paid, you know, $21 for a margarita and an eight ounce cocktail glass, which is yeah. unbelievable, you know, like, but those are, these are all new things that we're experiencing now, but historically the same thing always happens. There's always something, there's always a time and there's always going to be events that you think are so different from before that the impact that they have on the result is will never be the same. And they ultimately always are. That's the one constant is that it's always something different that triggers these cycles and this boom and bust cycle in economics. And so eventually these rates will come down. Eventually there will be a big demand for mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. Eventually these markets will start to regulate or become more regular in the way that they trade. Yeah. I guess, I guess my, my argument or my point is, you know, the reason why you and I, you know, make this show is to educate, yes, the consumer, but also the real estate professional, because the question that you and I are always being asked is, I think people are well aware of like, okay, here's where we're at right now. But the question I'm fielding every day is from real estate agents freaking out to say, hey, should I get out of the business? What do you think is going to happen? That's the question. And every week we make a US real estate housing market update video. And in the comments, I think a lot of people appreciate the, the, the insights, but there are some people who say, oh, this is just all speculation every single week. And my point is if, if there was any um, hesitation or are there any doubt that mortgage rates weren't headed downward, loans would be priced differently. That's my point. I'm trying to answer the question from, from the skeptic who says, no, interest rates are, you think 7% is bad, just wait. They're, they're gonna continue to go up, 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 and up. If that was the case, then wouldn't we see a zero point rate? In other words, lenders wouldn't be pricing yeah. a seven and a quarter loan with points associated. The only reason they're doing that is they know the vast majority of these loans are gonna be refinanced because rates are going to go down. That's right. my point, right? Exactly, yeah. So it's- And, and, and so that's, that's my point is like, I guess I never looked at that. You've been telling me this and everybody else week over week over week over week, like there, there is no zero point rate, but it just hit me. I'm like, this is the evidence we, we need where it is not speculation that rates are headed towards going down. It's just a question of when, but they're not, going up and that's the evidence i guess that that i was that just hit me just now and and to that note and, and we've touched on this before is that you know the w w the people that are skeptical which is fine right that's yeah. that's fine and, and say basing on speculation is they're they're looking at they're being short-sighted also with in their rear view mirror so so we're not sitting here and, and i certainly don't believe that rates are going to go back to three percent or four percent right right uh, and i don't even know a hundred percent about the low fives it would certainly be nice there's certainly a lot of data that shows that that's a very real possibility but when we talk about rates meaningfully going down you're looking at something in that mid to high five range uh, which is which is significant based on um, what what prices are today, you know, and, and just thinking about, you know, what three quarters of a percent is on even like a $300,000 loan, you're looking at, I don't know, $2,300 a, a year in interest or $200 a month. That's a significant amount of of money that's that's changing hands. So no, rates are not going back to like twos and threes and fours and all of that rates, when we talk about rates going down, we're looking at maybe a percent, a percent and a half lower than what we have now. Right. Um, but the the thing, and, and I go back to the psychological cues of that though, is that when people see rates stabilize and especially they see a five in front of them is going to take a lot of people off the, off the sideline. A lot of well, people that's are my point. much more interested in the housing market. That is exactly where I was going. You know, and, and that's what I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there that still believe that there's no way that's where we're heading, that we're, we're still headed towards this housing crash. That's where a lot of people still believe we're heading. And I'm looking at, I'm trying to stay away from speculation. I'm trying to look at the facts and evidence. And let me ask you, let me go back to the whole um, way these, these mortgages are being priced. Let me ask you the same question, but I'm going to invert it. 
what other reason would a lender price a mortgage at seven and a quarter with with points associated with that loan if if it weren't that rates were going down and they were worried about people refinancing these quickly what would another reason be besides that just i i think that i i think part of it too is if a lot of lenders showed you know if, if i came out and showed you an eight and a half percent and i i mean I don't, I don't think I know. I don't know a, a really good way to answer that for you other than because the way the rate sheets are, that's that's what's weird about it right now is like people are like, what's a zero point rate? And I'm like, there's not one. I was like, but you can pay a point for 6.75 and pay, you know, one point for 6.75 or you can pay, you know, eight tenths of a point for seven and a half. Like it's literally like it's such a minor difference which is telling me that rates rates should be trading in that high six percent range they have and they have no like there, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes with mortgages which are which is called like service like service values of loans because as much as you think like chase bank or whatever you know bank of america or whatever it might be if you're paying seven percent on that loan you think that Chase or whoever, whatever bank it is, is making that 7% and they're not. So like a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac or an FHA, they're the ones that are collecting that interest on that loan. And the lenders are collecting a servicing fee. And so they know that that loan has very little value to them if it's going to pay off in a very short amount of time. So that's that, that premium, all that premium up front is it's just protecting their profit right now because they know the value of that loan is very, very small. Now that's my point. Just... Let, let me stop right there. That's my point. My point that you nailed it. My question for you that someone who knows more about mortgage backed securities and all this stuff than, than, than anybody else that I know, my question is if mortgage rates were, were going to continue going up, would lenders still price them the way you're seeing right now? Or would they do no, it differently? So. No. That's my point. We would have we'd have a we'd have a zero point spot. Yeah, because to your point, lenders would be getting paid on these mortgages longer term and the risk of someone refinancing goes way, way down. Right. There's, you know, it, it's, you, you see all the, you see a lot of people talking about, you know, I bought my house in 1982 and the interest rate was 14% and, and all of these things, you know, before before rates get back to, we have to remember that the Fed, while some of their decision-making is questionable and, and you would think that they don't learn from things in the past, the, the Fed would not, I mean, that would literally put the brakes on so much of the economy to see mortgage rates go that high, that there's things that they can do to ease those mortgage rates at the same time. That's that's why they're raising, they're, the goal of the Fed is to raise rates very aggressively right now to stop inflation and then they want to lower that rate. They do not want they do not want the cost of money to be that expensive here in the United States because it hinders growth. So the goal for the Fed is to stop demand, to slow down the increases of increases on the cost of everyday goods for Americans and then lower that Fed funds rate so that the companies again start spending money on innovation and hiring and we begin to grow our economy again. The goal the Fed is is not to to you know destroy demand and put our country into a recession and leave it there. So there you know there's there's a fine balance that they're managing, and and as we've known be, as we saw before, right? We said in 2020 housing is going to take us out of the recession, which it did, and the housing played a very big role in the 2008 recession. And then there was even in 2018 when we saw or 2019 when we saw a small recession. Housing played a very big role in that and it will continue to. So, you know, to see to see rates continuing to climb and to push us into a housing crash, like the the powers that be are very aware of that. And they they're not going to put us back in that position as much as many yeah. of us would like them to, so we can go out there and take cash that's sitting on the sidelines and buy investment properties and and make a whole bunch of money in real estate. It's just there's not the there's not the supply out there to do that. No doubt, no doubt. And, and, and despite mortgage rates, it's almost like buyers have accepted it because you said it, you said it before, a third of the inventory 
is still selling, number one, above list price, a third. A third of the inventory is selling more than list price. And here's the crazier thing. Almost 80% of the active listing inventory is still selling within 30 days. With the vast majority on average selling in 18 days. Yes. Yeah, that's what's so insane. That that's a byproduct of 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 very, very low inventory and people that have to buy houses are still gonna buy houses. You know, the new adjusted home sales rates, I think at what, 4.1, 4.2 million home sales. And that's the lowest we've seen in a long, long time. I mean, you you see even you if you start to see interest rates go six and a half. I think the unlocking of inventory, the unlocking of transactions will go right back up by 10, 15, 20%. What are your thoughts? I agree with that. You know, more, it's funny, you can track mortgage application data is almost a, is, is a perfect, you know, congruent line with, with mortgage rates. So as mortgage rates decline, we start to see mortgage applications rise in, in purchase and in refinance. Refinance is kind of a dead business right now. But it ride they they those two ride the same path, like just lock steps. So yeah, as soon as as we do start to see like, even in the beginning of the year, if you remember in like January when we did uh, when we saw rates dip below six percent, we were I was locking some loans at five point eight seven five and five point nine nine when things were really were really rolling there. Um, I mean, I was jamming in a January, you know, 25, 30 lo active loans and in, in a single pipeline, uh, all purchase transactions. And then as rates went up, it, it started to dwindle off. So you will see that you will start to see that happen. Absolutely. As, as rates go down. So what, what are we looking ahead now? Okay. So we talked about where we're at, how we got here, what's happening, you know, looking ahead um, to maybe this week and next week, what are some things that we're looking forward to that might have an effect on, on bringing rates down per, perhaps. So this, this week's huge, right? So, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be all over the, all over the headlines, but the feds meetings, that fed meeting starts tomorrow and concludes on Wednesday. So that that's a, um, that it's a given they're going to raise rates 25 basis points. Everybody is expecting that the market is expecting that. Um, and the market's just sitting on hold, waiting for that to waiting for the press conference after that meeting to see, you know, what what their commentary is and what their outlook looks like. And they're going to comment on on seeing because we've seen, you know, the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of inflation numbers come in really, really positive. Now, the core number on like CPI and, and PPI and stuff like that, it beat expectations. It got better than we thought, but it's still above where the Fed wants to be. So they're again, the market knows they're going to comment on that, but it's it's really looking for them to say, you know, for the bond market wants them to say, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, looking at the end of the year, we don't know if we need to 100% do that 20. They're going to be looking for like what the plan is for that next 25 basis points, if they're going to do that or not. Um, Wall Street is counting on them not raising rates a second time uh, at, toward the end of this year. So we'll see. So that's going to be a really big meeting. Um, we have GDP comes out for Q2 on Thursday. So that's gross domestic product. That's like America's sales numbers to see uh, to see where we ended up. And that'll that'll be interesting. Again, the, the way they forecast that and what they put those numbers at is, is all so accurate now that I don't think that's going to necessarily move any mountains that got forecasted higher a couple of weeks ago. And I think that that's probably where we're going to end up. We'll get initial jobless claims. And then Friday... Uh, we get PCE, which is personal consumption expenditure. So that's really what the Fed looks at that and CPI. So PCE is, you know, how much money we're spending on stuff. And, and that'll be, that'll be an interesting number. Again, we're supposed to see that come in uh, a lot lighter than we thought. So that'll be that we'll, we'll be watching that closely. And then really we're rolling into next month now. And, and unfortunately, when it comes to the inflation numbers that we're going to be looking at in August, we'll be replacing inflation numbers from last year's July, which is actually declaration, inflation had slowed way down just for the month of July, and then it perks back up. So we're going to be replacing some ugly numbers. So we might see a little bit of a bumpy road in August. We'll see, but this, uh, the rest of this week should be interesting. Yeah. Well, it will be interesting. And, you know, the, the thing that I find interesting is despite what happens with rates, which is the, the, the big talk of every media outlet, you know, home prices continue to soar. We, we, we saw in June, 
the second highest home sales prices in history, which was which was crazy. Distressed home sales were only making up for about two percent of the overall transactions uh, in the marketplace, which is near historic lows. I mean, it's no yeah. higher than we saw over the last couple of years. So distressed sales isn't a thing. New home sales continue to soar. I mean, that is the thing that is super interesting. Home builders, I, I think, are really they're doing well in this market. It's up twenty percent. Um, and I think a lot of home buyers are turning that that route because of what home builders are able to do for them that they can't do in the resale market. And so any any thoughts on on new home sales and new construction from from your perspective? I mean, you know, that like I've said before, people are people are turning to new construction because they don't want to compete in this in this market because you can get you can get a construction, you can get new construction homes with five to 10% down, which, which a lot yeah. of people have, you know, you don't have to come into a new construction home with a significant amount of money out of pocket. Uh, and, and even more so a lot of builders, especially your big corporate builders will do your landscaping and your grass and everything included in your purchase price. So it's really no different than buying a new home now, other than you have to wait. You know, the, the only thing now though, that you have to think about, and this is just a function of, you know, people being in, in control is that now builders are going to start to set, like increase these prices. There's no reason for them not to. And, and, and we're seeing that all over now with the average, I think the average new home price was $436,000. Yeah. Um, and, and they're going to continue to go up because the builders are in control and why wouldn't you? And, you know, being in this process myself is that the builders are having a hard time finding work and you out, you kind of dig in you're like, well, what's, what's hard to find? They're like, they're like, well, these contractors or these, you know, this framer wants $35 an hour to frame a house. And so it's telling me like, oh, it's, it's a cost thing. It's not finding worker. Like there's always workers for $35 an hour if you're willing yeah. to do that, you know? So you'll yeah. start to see that continue to be reflected in those prices, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would just add to that, that, you know, Another reason why, even though prices of, of new construction continue to go up, these home builders are doing things with mortgage rates that seem un, unbelievable. You know, I keep hearing just last week, I had another person do a friend of mine get a new construction loan through through the builder, you know, and the rates that they're getting is is unbelievable. So even though prices are up, the rate is so much lower, significantly lower that the monthly payment, which you and I have I've said for years, is all that the buyer cares about, right? They, yeah. they can get a brand new house for 450 to your point versus going to compete with these existing home prices that may be a little bit lower, but their payment is actually lower. So it's like, well, that's a no brainer. And so yeah, are you still sure. seeing that on your side too? Yeah, for sure. You find with the right builders and especially the giant, you know, the big, yes. big builders, uh, they did. There's there's some different back end things you can do to secure money at at certain rates and and hold on to it and offer that for the homes that you're building for sure. And those because those banks want that builder's business, you know. That's so right. It's not uh, it's not unheard of for sure. So, well, I appreciate you very much. We'll uh, we'll come back to to the housing market next week, and we'll have a lot to to cover next week's episode. But uh, appreciate your time, like always. All right, man. Have fun.